What do you swear you saw but have no proof of? Story 1. When I was about 10 or 11, we were having a get-together at Gma's house for the holidays. All of us cousins played all day, and when night fell, we played hide-and-seek. While the adults smoked and drank up by the house, we stayed on the back of the property just having a good time. I was hiding in between a bush and the property fence when I heard the strangest sound. It was almost a scream, both happy and miserable at the same time. I jumped up and kind of shouted. All my cousins heard it, and we all saw it, too. It was an animal on two legs, and it ran off with really jerky motions. Being the oldest by about three years, I calmed down the crying little ones and explained as best I could that it was just someone trying to scare us. I've had nightmares about that sound. In my mind, it seems a grotesque mimicry of our joyous screams and laughter as we played. None of my cousins today will admit to even remembering the incident, although the adults remembered the commotion it caused. I heard and saw something similar in the up of Michigan in the Sault Ste. Marie campground. Everyone was asleep, my campsite was the only one with a fire lit, and my dad's girlfriend and I were awake. All of a sudden, I hear this terrible scream with an almost cackle quality to it. Then there was a rustling on the side of a fence. We had a clear line of sight between the campsite and the fence, and this weird cougar dog human-looking thing climbed over the fence with its knees and arms bent at odd angles, almost 90 degrees. Then it was over the fence. It stood up on two legs and ran to the left into the campgrounds. It was terrifying. No one has ever believed me, but my dad's now ex-girlfriend still remembers, and looking into the urban legends in Michigan, I came across the story of the dog man. Any chance you guys were in Michigan too, or that there's a similar urban legend around where you live? That is some weird crap, but I mean, sometimes animals just act really weird, especially with a disease. At least that's what I'll be telling myself so I can sleep a little better tonight. Story 2. My friend and I were watching basketball in the early days when Charles Barkley was a panelist. He was apologizing for calling a team midget and saying that he now knew it was offensive. But as they were going to a commercial, we both heard him say over a hot mic, besides, they shouldn't hate me, they should hate God. My friend and I were amazed and convinced he would be fired, but not only did we never hear about it again, the clip doesn't even exist online anywhere. It's as though we had a double delusion. Funny enough, yesterday I was reading a thread about satellite TV. Back in the day, you could pick up the satellite feeds that broadcasters sent to local TV stations. Like, if NBC was covering a basketball game, they'd have a satellite truck set up at the arena beaming up to space. The satellite would then beam that down to Earth so that your local NBC station could pick it up and transmit it across its broadcast area. It was then up to your local station to then put in advertisements during breaks and whatnot. However, if you had a big dish satellite, you could sometimes pick up those raw feeds. Supposedly, you'd end up hearing the commentators just BSing, the cameraman aiming at random things, etc. Story 3. I was having a secret smoke one night, and when I was finished, I went to put the ashtray in my hiding place on top of a high cupboard in my kitchen. Instead of getting the footstool, I was on my tiptoes and stretching up to put the ashtray up there when I lost my balance and the ashtray slipped out of my fingers and fell down to the floor. I ducked out of the way so I didn't get covered in ash or get hit by the heavy glass ashtray, and I heard it hit the ground behind me loudly and then clatter as it rolled. I sighed as I knew I'd have to clean up ash from the floor and was annoyed at myself for being clumsy. But then when I turned around to where I had heard it land, there was nothing there. I honestly spent about 30 minutes looking all over that kitchen for the ashtray or even a trace of ash on the floor, but there was nothing. It and its contents had simply vanished into thin air. I went to bed totally freaked out that night and had another look the next morning, but it was still gone and I've never seen it again since. I feel like I've heard this one before, but all I can say is that the most unbelievable part of this story is that this person would think an ashtray in the kitchen wouldn't be caught on to pretty promptly. Smokers, I know your sense of smell doesn't work as well as the rest of us, but I promise that ashtray wasn't a secret. Story 4 Late to the party, but I'll post my story. When I was about seven or eight, I was at my grandmother's house in West Virginia to spend the night along with my brother and sister. It was Friday night, and we were watching old-school TGIF. There was a knock on the door, and I jumped up to answer it. My grandma was in her bedroom and didn't hear it. I wasn't supposed to answer the door by myself, but I really liked to do it. I opened the door, and no one was there. I stepped out and looked to the left and right. To the right, beside the door, my grandma kept a small table. Sitting on that table was a mandrill, one of those primates like Rafiki from The Lion King. 
I don't remember it moving, I just saw it sitting there staring at me. I freaked out and slammed the door. My grandma came running out and I told her there was a monkey outside. She ran out and my brother and sister ran to the door to see the monkey. I'll never forget when I ran out and that table was empty. My grandma told me I shouldn't tell tall tales and not open the door when she wasn't around. That's been over 20 years ago and my brother and sister still make fun of me for seeing a monkey. I've done Google searches about mandrills escaped from the zoo in rural West Virginia, but no such luck. It is still so clear in my mind, I am sure it was there, though. Story 5 When I was 10, we had a 14-year-old German shepherd who was getting very sick. I was home alone momentarily as my mom went to the neighbors to pick up a book or something. Our German shepherd came over, convinced me to walk outside with him, and started licking my hands, looked at me, and ran away, jumping the fence, and never came back. He was so loyal and good that to this day no one believes me and thinks he was stolen because he would never leave. I'm almost certain that he did that because he didn't want us to see him die and he wanted to go to the massive forest area and do his thing. I miss you, buddy. Edit. Wow, some amazing replies here. I'm glad to know all our pets love us in this way and that they care like they do. Much love. Edit 2. Those of you wondering why no one believes a kid on something that doesn't happen a lot was that we lived in Iran at the time and the dogs, especially rare pure breeds, were usually stolen, so my family thought it was a result of that. Story 6. We watched a white light hover in the distance between two mountains, then it moved up, then down. At that point, I called my buddies outside to watch it. We witnessed it move side to side, then in a perfect clockwise circle, then anti-clockwise. Next, it started doing tight figure eights one way, then back the other way. We watched it, then move diagonally to the left, then back to center, diagonally right, and then back to center. During this, we discussed the possibilities of what it could be, a helicopter, a skilled pilot, a series of spotlights. The speed at which it moved and the fact that it didn't waver slightly and the fact that the motion was so fluid left us without an explanation. As we discussed and watched the movements, the light moved even faster up, down, and diagonally. It sped off to the right at a speed we could barely focus on. It was now about three kilometers on the side of the mountain and then suddenly it took off straight up and out towards the stars till it was gone. I mean, on one hand, this is really interesting and like, why would someone make this up? For some likes on the internet? I mean, maybe, but that seems kind of dumb. But I also have to wonder about what kind of alien would be doing loops by some mountains on Earth. Also kind of dumb. But hey, our universe, it's kind of dumb. Story 7. After my grandmother died, she left her rocking chair that she had rocked me to sleep in as a little boy. I kept it in my bedroom as a reminder of her. Not long after she passed, I would wake up and see her quietly sitting in the rocker, smiling. We'd have a conversation, just as we did when she was alive. This recurred regularly, night after night, with all sorts of discussions, until one night when she disappeared from the rocking chair right before my eyes, never to return. I can't prove any of it, of course, but if those nightly visions were all dreams, they were hands down the most vivid series ever. The sad part is that after she stopped appearing, that rocker seemed very empty, and I realized how much I missed her. Story 8. While I was playing poker with a few friends, I was dealing and somehow managed to deal a royal flush on the board, giving every person a royal flush. This was well into our game, and the cards were definitely well shuffled, and don't forget I'd also placed the burn cards down. The odds of this are so astronomical that apart from the friends I was playing with, no one would believe it happened and would assume I'm just a liar. That is neat, I can't come close, but in around 2001 I was playing online poker, Hold'em, on dial-up. I'd been dealt AK suited, played it moderate cool, then the flop came up giving me an instant royal flush. Immediately my connection dropped and by the time I got back online I'd been timed out and we were on the next hand. It took all I could muster to not put my monitor through. That was the end of online poker for me, but over the last 16 years of casual kitchen table games, I've never seen it since. I mean, I don't know why folks wouldn't believe those stories. Like, yeah, super unlikely, but so is being struck by lightning. It's gonna happen to someone as extremely unlikely as it is. Story 9. My house shares a dead-end alley with a brewery. Really cool guys. Great beer. Not a bad neighbor. Their kitchen does good work, too. One of the neighborhood squirrels has figured this out. He got a taste for chicken bones. Wings is a recurring menu item. So I'll see him go into the garbage, fetch a chicken wing, then go over to the grease dumpster, which is the most foul thing in human existence, and that little effer will dunk that chicken bone in the grease and start tucking into it like it's his favorite thing. I've seen him do it a few times. No one believes me. Womp womp. 
Oh yeah, that squirrel is roided out too. He looks like one of those buff kangaroo photos. Has huge nuts. Sometimes we'll perch on my garage roof to take a leak. I think he's organizing a gang in the alley. Edit. I am installing vid cameras on my property for general security purposes and plan to try to get him on camera doing this. Hey, squirrels like fat. We put out seeds and suet, which is beef fat, for the birds, and the squirrels go wild for that stuff, so we have to put it where they can't get to it. They're trying to build up fat for the winter, and that stuff will do the trick. Story 10. In 1994, on a farm in the southern Midwest U.S., five-year-old me had this huge yellow lab, sweetest dog in the world who one day suddenly lost her crap barking and ran outside. Being five, I followed her and watched her run out into the cow pasture, where the cows were suspiciously nowhere in sight, and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the effing gray wolf. That area at that time was definitely not wolf country. Coyote, sure, but there is no way it was a coyote. Thing towered over my lab, and I'd seen plenty enough coyotes before to know that this thing was not that. My lab barked her damn head off right in his face, and after about a minute, he tilted his head and then just turned around and disappeared into the woods. Found all the cows at the opposite end of the pasture circled around the two calves we had. They were never that terrified of coyotes, and they had no fear of domestic dogs. My lab literally climbed over them when they laid down and would tug on their tails. Cows gave no Fs. I will go to my damn grave saying it was a wolf I saw, but nobody believes me, of course. I've spent years researching wolves and wolf hybrids, but every picture I've seen of both the animal and the paw prints he left behind says it was very, very, very much more wolf than coyote or dog or even a mix. Story 11. I saw a bunch of crows, around 20 plus, gathered around in a circle. I was like, what the F? And took a closer look to see three other crows in the middle of the circle, all on their backs and some crows from the circle would hop in and try to peck at the three crows while they cawed and tried to defend themselves with their feet. I know crows are smart and all, but didn't expect this level of social behavior. It went on for a while before a kid ran in and scattered them all. My biology teacher in seventh grade told me she came across the same thing, called it crow court, and said that crows who broke the law were tried by others. The crimes were stealing food from young crows or mothers and killing defenseless crows. She said that sometimes they would just rip out a few feathers from the tail so they couldn't fly for a while, and sometimes they'd kill it depending on the severity of the offense. Of course, she also used a rock for deodorant and brought a bunch of animals to class without permission, so who knows. Edit. I now know that the rock is alum. Thanks for the info. Story 12. When I was five, I woke up from my sleep and saw a man sitting on the stairs watching me. I wasn't scared, though. There was something tranquil about it. I just watched him, and he watched me for what seemed like ten minutes. Then, all of a sudden, he was gone. A few days later, I found out my dad was killed in Europe. I live in Canada, and my parents were separated. There's a picture of me with him when I was just born, but he left shortly after that. To this day, that is the only memory that I have of my dad, a ghost watching over me. I don't believe in ghosts, but I know what I saw. I've never told anyone before except my mom. <sighs> I may have my beliefs, and there may be a few ways to explain that, but frankly, I'm not going to take that from you. Honestly, if that's what you saw, that's what you saw. Story 13. When I was about 10, they started putting missing children on milk cartons. Every morning for a while, I was looking at this boy's face on the side of the milk while I would eat my cereal. Then one day, a car went down my street while I was playing outside, and there was a boy in the back seat with his face up close to the window looking out. I'm 99% sure it was the boy from the milk carton. I told my parents, but they didn't believe me. Something similar happened to me. I was 5 to 6 and was playing outside with other kids. All of a sudden, those two cars stopped by a sidewalk. They grab a girl on a tricycle and speed off. Only her bike was left. We ran to my mom to tell her someone got kidnapped. She was cooking, somewhat listened, nodded her head, smiled, oh really, and that was it. I think about it often. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 14, UFOs. I don't mean I think I saw aliens. I mean on several occasions when I was younger, my parents and I saw various flying crafts that we could not identify as any current technology. My money is on secret military tech. Edit. This post prompted me to look into it. I think I have identified one of the UFOs as a B-2 Spirit or some similar kind of stealth bomber, seen at midnight flying low over a county road in the middle of nowhere, England, sometime between 1997 to 2002. Scared the crap out of us as it flew straight over our car, seemed like only a meter or so above us, just a black triangle covered in flashy lights like it was going to abduct us before disappearing. 
Another one could have been sort of a rare kind of weather balloon. I forgot the name, but it looks weird as F. As for my third UFO, yet to identify it. To those people commenting saying that they've seen floating colored glowing orbs, those are actually a kind of weather balloon. Nice try, FBI. You're not going to pull a fast one over on us. Why does the weather need all those balloons anyway, huh? Huh? Story 15. When I was about six, my entire family was helping to build my grandparents a new house. I was helping my dad move some really long 2 by 4s from the lumber pile when a mouse ran out from under the board I had moved. Out in the middle of the woods, mice were no big deal to any of us. I did a double take, though, because the mouse was freaking blue. I don't mean the sun reflected off its fur and added a blue sheen to it. I mean a brilliant royal blue. It was running fast, but I got my dad to notice it too, and he agreed that the mouse really was royal freaking blue. We've told multiple people, my mom included, and no one believes us. But we know what we saw. Once when I was a teenager, I was watching a movie by myself. The TV room then had two chairs separated by a couch. I was on the chair to the right, and at one point I laughed really hard at the movie. I heard someone else laugh and saw what seemed to be a girl my age doubled over in laughter in the other chair. The weird thing is, it didn't startle me, it just felt nice to share laughter. Then I realized I was alone in the whole house, and the chair was empty. So I turned off the TV and went outside, lol. Story 17. I don't believe in alien invaders. I'm sure there's life on other planets. It seems ridiculous that we'd be completely alone, but I'd imagine you couldn't keep a visit from an interplanetary species a secret. That said, I swear to God I saw a tall, thin, long-armed, long-legged thing walk from one wheat field across the road in front of my car and over into the other. I thought my eyes were just playing tricks on me, so I didn't say anything for a second, but then my friend in the seat next to me said, Wait, did you see something just now? No idea what it was, but I saw. Okay, so your really tall neighbor was drunk and got lost. Give the poor guy a break and maybe help him out of that wheat field. It gets cold at night. Story 18. I was out for a walk late one night. This was in rural Illinois, so there was nobody else out. I noticed from a distance that there were these squirrels just standing in the middle of the road. Thought to myself that this is strange. When I got closer, I noticed there were three squirrels standing around a cat that was lying down. I thought for a minute the cat was dead, but when I got closer and walked past them, the squirrels and cat followed me with their eyes, none of them moving a muscle. It was a look like, move it along, nothing to see here. Still to this day, I think of how bizarre that was. Story 19. As a child, I touched some weird pest plant in our garden. I think it stung me. Then I saw everything in inverted colors for a short time, and then back to normal. I was in such a shock I couldn't explain it to my mom. I just went to her crying. You probably touched a Brugmansia. They are loaded with scopolamine and can cause you to see things that are not there. Inverse colors are a common hallucination from them. Brugmansia are a very common garden flower despite their effects because only small children will be affected by contact alone. Did you have big orange flowers that hang downwards in your garden? Not too often you get cool, satisfying answers in threads like this, but today I learned something new. I just looked them up, and yeah, this is accurate, and also I think I may have actually had one of these plants not that long ago. Wild. Story 20. When I was around 10 years old, I went down to a lake when I was on holiday. When I get down there, I vividly remember a massive ball of lightning just hovering, and then it struck the middle of the lake. I never ran so fast in my life to the little house we were staying in. Our house was struck by lightning one night, and my mom said she saw a hovering ball of lightning. Apparently, it's something that can happen. Yeah, it's called ball lightning. It can pass through windows and is scary crap. Story 21. I was at the airport and saw a businessman with a carry-on wheelie bag get off the escalator. He turned the corner, broke into a sprint, carrying the bag by its small strap handle on top. He swung the bag forward and let go of the strap handle. While it was in midair, he grabbed the currently unextended extending handle, pressed the button on the back, swing extended the handle and landed it on its wheels, and continued sprinting all without breaking stride. Story 22. I'm in line at a cafeteria. The guy in front of me is holding a pudding cup. Someone walking by stumbles and falls into pudding cup guy, knocking his pudding cup out of his hand. While everyone is looking at stumbling guy, the pudding cup goes a good two feet straight up in the air. Pudding cup guy is totally confused and at the last second turns and catches the pudding cup behind his back. He looks at me, smiles, and that was that. No one else saw it. Story 23. A fat squirrel in a tree threw a piece of fried chicken at me. 
I was walking to class and passed by a trash can with a domed lid. On top was a bottom piece of a bun. As was walking by it, a squirrel came out of the trash can and put a Chick-fil-A chicken on top of the bun, then went back inside the trash can. I assume it was to get the top bun. I really wish I took a photo of it. Another instance was a squirrel with a cigarette butt in its mouth. I would call BS on this except for the fact that having watched the horde of squirrels in our backyard enough, I can confirm these weirdos are oddly smart and do some weird stuff. Story 24. When I was five, I liked to mix various liquids, playing chemistry, I guess. My grandma let me play with all her bathroom stuff. I mixed her shampoos and creams and cleaning products, etc. I just realized now this might have been dangerous if I had mixed ammonia and bleach, for example. I swear, I created a white liquid that produced a single black bubble that would come to the surface and pop at a regular interval. No one believes me, or maybe no one cares. I guess it's not that cool. Story 25. One time when I was really young, maybe like 10 years old, I came home after school and was making myself a salami sandwich. I pulled the bag of salami out and took out two slices. I smacked the two slices together and suddenly they became one. I tried my hardest to separate them, but there was no seam or anything that I could split them up with. I even showed it to my mom, but not a single person believed me when I told them. I had fused two pieces of salami together. Hey, look who finally beat Jubilee for worst mutant power. Story 26. A chameleon escaped from a bag when my friend was giving it to me, and it leapt into a big pile of snow. I looked around for it for a while, but couldn't find it, so I gave up. Several weeks later, the snow all melted, and I was out there and found the lizard partially frozen to the ground. I peeled him off and put it in one of those little plastic tanks and sat it by the radiator in my house. Within an hour or two, the lizard was hopping around the cage like nothing ever happened. It lived for several years after that and was known to my friend and I as Jesus the Resurrection Lizard. Story 27. I was at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. I walked up to the cuttlefish tank and for some reason all 20 or so of the cuttlefish rushed over to me. It was a big tank, maybe 10 feet long. I walked the length of it and they followed me. I walked back and they followed me. A few other people saw and tried it themselves. But alas, the cuttlefish only had eyes for me. My best guess as to the cause was that the guy who feeds them is my doppelganger. Story 28. When I was about 12, I was riding in the back seat of the family car. I looked over and the car next to me had three people sitting in front. This was in the 1980s, and it was a man, woman, and man, in that order. At the stoplight, the woman leaned down and the two men leaned in and started making out. This was the first time I had seen anything like this. I was so dumbfounded, I couldn't even tell my family. Story 29. When my grandfather died, God bless his soul, my 12-year-old self was quite upset. I asked my dad for two dimes. I know it's odd. I put one in his breast coat pocket and held one myself. Years later, my whole family had been finding dimes everywhere in random spots. They attributed this to grandpa looking over us, kind of turned into a thing. On that token, my dad forgot about the double dime I requested at Graham's funeral. I brought up what happened at family dinner recently, and they think I made it up. Story 30. A man dressed as a Confederate soldier walking down my street as I was heading home from work. There was a school bus coming and he stopped on the other side of the road as if to let the bus pass before crossing, and I stopped at the stop sign. We looked at each other, the bus passed, and then he was gone. So you saw a Civil War reenactor get onto a bus to go to a Civil War reenactment. I mean, maybe I'm missing a detail here, but I think I've solved the case. Or I'm just getting tired and am being a butt. You decide. Story 31. I slipped on icy stairs last winter and swear I saw my own butt crack as I fell. No one believes me. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.